Hello YouTube family, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Sharita. Welcome, and if you are a returning viewer, thank you all so much for the love and the continued support of my channel. So today's video is going to be another fun one, you guys. I want to know, is artificial intelligence about to take my job, okay? Even though I'm not content creating full time, that is definitely the goal. So do I have something to fear? Like, you know, when you put in something, is it really going to come with some some options, some, some great recommendations? That is what today's video is about. I asked OpenAI, you know, chat GPT, uh, what are the top niche fragrances? They gave me 10 fragrances and we are about to get into the AI's picks, okay? So without further ado, uh, let's jump right into today's video. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, you guys. Uh, I'm looking at this list, I'm like, wow, okay. <laughs> okay, like some of these picks are right on. And so if you're not familiar with AI or artificial intelligence, chat GPT, uh, you probably have been living under a rock because it's completely taken over. And this is like not even infancy stages. I'm talking about child of the sperm ain't even met the egg yet. That's how early in this process we are. So if you're ready for it or not, it's going to disrupt a lot of different fields. Um, and so you just got to be prepared and you got to do what you can to stay current and to stay ahead so that it's helpful to you and not necessarily, um, you know, something that you have to be, feel threatened by. Like that's just technology. Um, and this is no different. So this list is solid. I'm going to say now there were a few on here that I had never, um, one I had never heard of and the other, I had never smelled. So the first one, and if, you, if I'm looking over to the side, it's because I'm looking at my, my monitor. So the first one is Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mall. I just did my masterpiece video last week where I asked you know, my YouTube and Instagram community what fragrances they consider to be masterpiece fragrances. And this one made the list according to you all out there. And um, a chat GPT was on it as well, okay? So, Portrait of a Lady is a rose. Um, it's got some spices in there, some cinnamon, I think, sandalwood, and it's got like this incense and patchouli vibe. Um, it is very, some people think it's very mature. I just think it's a regal fragrance, very regal. For me, when I sampled it and tried to wear it very early in my perfume journey, I found it to be just leaning a little masculine and very beast mode. Like I was, you know, am I gonna be able to pull this off type of fragrance? So I never got a full bottle, but it is one that I want to revisit this upcoming fall and winter. Um, just because I'm in that mode right now, I'm revisiting greats that I've never tried or that I need to retry. And one that I've recently retried also made the list, honey. Okay, so we'll get to that one in a minute, but absolutely a solid pick. Okay, open AI, and that is Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mall. So Killian's Love Don't Be Shy made number two. So, and these are in, in no particular order. They're not ranked. They're just, I'm giving you the 10 as they list them. So Love Don't Be Shy, um, uh, listen, I, I don't know what the top selling fragrance for Killian is, but I'm pretty sure this got to be in the top three, okay? Uh, Rihanna said that that was, a, well, some people around Rihanna, confirmed that that's what she smells like. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that that is a scent that people associate with Rihanna. I'm not gonna say it's her signature scent, which you hear a lot of people say because Rihanna is not a signature scent type of girl. She's really into fragrance. That's, I don't know if people know that or not, but she's really into fragrance. She's got the Clive Christian. She's got, I mean, she's got a real collection and she doesn't have a signature scent. So I'm gonna say people associate that scent with her and when that hit the the, the press, okay, uh, the bottles flew off the shelves. And I love this fragrance. It's a gourmand, it's orange blossom, you've got caramel, it's this marshmallow accord. And I think it's an amazing fragrance. Um, you know, if you love that type of scent profile, it's not gonna be for everyone. Some people hate the fragrance, I don't get that. Some people think it stinks, I don't get that. <laughs> but 
Okay, solid pick, all right? Because we're talking top niche fragrances. So what AI is doing is literally taking all the information <laughs> on the internet from, I think the, um, the latest that they can go to is 2021. So it's a couple years behind, um, but if we're talking about top, it's probably gonna be something that's been around at least for a couple years. So I feel like um, they're taking all the information that, you know, from the YouTube community, Instagram, uh, blogs, articles, they're taking all of that. And it's like Google on steroids is putting, it's compiling all that for you. So you don't have to search. And I would have to read with this one as well. Very, very popular. All right. Number three is also from the house of Frederick Mall. And this is Cardinal Flower. I think I have a sample of this. I haven't worn this or smell this in a while but i do remember it was definitely a huge like white floral scent beautiful beautiful um very sophisticated white floral and you have to be a white floral lover to love it okay this is not for someone dipping their toe in the white florals on the fence about white florals it's very white floral um unisex but Leaning feminine to me just because that is, you know, I associate white florals with more of a feminine quality. So that one is very um, popular for that particular house. I didn't think it was that popular like mass wise, but it made the list. So number three, again, is Cardinal Flower by Frederick Mall. Now, number four. <laughs> we knew. Now, look, if this wasn't on here, I was really about to be like, this is some open AIBS. Baccarat Rouge Try For You better believe it, better be on here, and it is. Um, I think it was probably the one that I was looking for. Like, if that is not on here, my job is safe. But I don't know, okay? These pegs, listen. So Baccarat Rouge Try 40 from the house of MFK. We know it, we love it, it's duped. Like, has there ever been a fragrance duped to this amount, this level, um, to the point where people that love the fragrance that hold it in such high regard, almost like are sick of it, they're dumbing it down, it's not all that, it's it's still a masterpiece, okay, to me and to many others. And I don't know, you guys, I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and I don't ever smell Baccarat on nobody. I don't know if people are just not on the, the Baccarat train here. Um, but I think out in public, I have smelled Baccarat Rouge once, twice, maybe, because I feel like one of the times it was a dupe. Um, but I don't smell that <laughs> around, thank goodness, because that's one that I hope to always have in my collection, provided that they're always making it and they haven't changed the formulation to water it down or anything like that. But Baccarat Rouge 540 is saffron, it's fur, it's resinous, it's ambery, uh, it's very sweet, transparent, bold, room filling, sillage on 10. And some people cannot smell this. Y'all, that is... Either you buy wet Ambroxan and you pick up on it or you don't. And that is the thing with those molecular notes. Like I feel like I mentioned in a previous video, Akigala Wood, it's a synthetic note. And I feel like it just completely bypasses some people's nose. To me, it's ultra prominent in any perfume. Um, so that is that is the, the thing. You have to kind of have your own experience with these fragrances because what is beast mode to one person maybe literally a skin scent or non-existent to another. We all perceive fragrance differently, which makes it highly subjective. So when you watch reviews, okay, uh, when the open AI is giving you suggestions, take it with a grain of salt, test it for yourself. All right, so this next one, I don't like it, you guys. I had never smelled it and I got a sample. I'm wearing it now. Pope by Barreto. Now, where's she come from? Is she that popular for the house? I mean, I've heard of it. I've never thought to try it. And I did, I'm so glad that, you know, just for video purposes, I try to get samples of ones I had never smelled. Um, this is fig and it is very green on me. Okay. Now, let me see. There is something coming off like jalapeno pepper. In it. <laughs> it's in the opening. And I don't like it. I could like it. If there was not this sharpness and this overly green component to the fig, it's very green to me. And it could be that combination of like that red apple. Oh, hold on. I might've changed my mind. See on paper, I didn't like it at all. On my skin, it's okay. I've changed my mind. 
I have changed my mind because I sprayed it on earlier, so it's really in a dry down, like on this part of my arm, and I just resprayed it. But I do not like the opening of this scent. It's giving jalapeno pepper. Um, but uh, if I am to be, you know, quite honest, I feel like Ouverture is what I want. Like if I'm going for that fig, that's what I want because that one is like fig perfection <laughs> for me. Um, but this one is nice. It's nice, but I never knew it was that popular. So y'all let me know. Is it that popular? Like, I feel like Balder Freak should have been in that spot. No? I don't know. Okay. So this next one, absolutely expected this to be on here. Santal 33 by Le Labo. Um, you know, this is that sandalwood leather vibe cardamom. And it's, it's very popular to the point where I feel like depending where you live, Santal is put into that overworn category like Baccarat. Like if you're in California, honey, they are so over that fragrance. <laughs> like it's very popular there. So they smell it everywhere and they're just kind of sick of it. Um, never really smell this here. I don't know. Are people in Georgia just not like, are they just not on their fragrances? It's funny because it's like, I will think maybe I'm just not paying attention. Or maybe people just don't spray, you know, heavy enough for people to pick up on the scent. But y'all went to Turkey, honey. I was turning my head every 10 seconds. Like the people in Turkey don't play about their fragrances. Same thing with Dubai. Yeah, so I'm thinking, I don't know. People in Georgia and Atlanta just don't be on their fragrances. Not the people I come in contact with, okay? All right, so this next one is one I had never heard of, never smelled, and but it is beautiful. This is, is it Shirkwe? I don't know how to pronounce this. Um, by Serge Lutons. Shergui or Sher girl, you know what I'm, I'm gonna put the name down below. I don't, I have no idea how to say this. I had never heard of it, like I said. So it's funny because when I put out the feeler and the questionnaire for uh, things that you consider to be masterpieces, this actually popped up. I remember someone putting this on there because I was like, dang, I just ordered a sample of this um, because of this video that I was preparing for. So this is a very like, it's fresh, it's spicy, it's very ambery. There is this honey note. You get some incense, musk, it's iris, it's rose. It's a lot going on in the fragrance, um, but it comes across as very well blended. It comes across as an amber fragrance that is not going to wear too heavy. Um, one that she could maybe wear all year. And I'm just going off this little sample. So I don't know the full wear experience of this. Um, it has tobacco, incense, honey. So it may wear heavier um, once you give it a real wear. I don't know, but it is quite nice. And I'm surprised I've never heard of this. Um, I wonder when it, this came out. 2001. It's a lot older. Okay. It's a lot older. Maybe that's why nobody really um, talks about it that much anymore. But there are definitely some fans out there because... It came up on the masterpiece questionnaire. So this one again is Shergui. Sure. Ooh, y'all tell me how to say this in the comments. Help me with the pronunciation. But again, a spicy amber um, a fragrance that is from the House of Serge Lutons. All right. So number eight, you guys, is from the House of MFK, and this is Oud Satin Mood. Um, right on. Okay, right on. Chat GPT. So this fragrance, I sir. Let me tell you, I didn't circle back around purposely, y'all. I was cleaning out these hundred thousands of samples and decans I've had that are just taking up so much room. Got ooh, sad mood. <laughs> Sample in my hand. And I threw it away. Well, uh, before I threw it away, I was like, I'm going to go throw this away. Let me just spray it just because, okay? Sprayed it. Hated the opening. Threw it away. Y'all, it began to dry down on me in a completely different way from anything I ever remember. I have given Ooh Satin Mood, you know, real wears, um, full day. And it was so, it was, first of all, I don't think I had ever smelled Oud. Okay. So a shock to the nose. I wasn't getting, I'm like vanilla rose. Y'all wouldn't get none of that. <laughs> this is two years ago. I wasn't getting any of that. I was getting something that I had never smelled before, which is the oud. But this fragrance, now that I'm smelling it with my nose matured, this is much more about the rose. Um, you do have the oud, but it it's behind that rose, that vanilla. 
not a sweet fragrance, but it was something in it was giving me minty medicinal on my skin. And I don't get that now. I don't get that now. It doesn't lean masculine to me now where I felt like it was leaning just a little masculine to me back then. And I love it. I want a full bottle. Probably will get um, the 30 ounce bottles that they have. Is it 30 ounce? The smaller bottles that they have. I don't, I'm not sure if I need a 50 ml of that yet. Like I want to get the smaller one. And if I ever get through that and I feel like I really need to, you know, because I don't wear those Udi scents super often unless it's a feminine oud, like your Passion de Amours or um, one of my favorite fragrances, Scherzo. So beautiful masterpiece fragrance, I must say. And it is no surprise that it made the list. Okay, y'all really batting here, uh, open the eye. I'm kind of like, damn, I'm impressed, I'm impressed. Number nine, Black Orchid by Tom Ford. Are we shocked? Such a provocative fragrance for its time. I feel like some people really do hold it to be a masterpiece scent. Um, editing Sharita here. I just wanted to drop in here and say that while I was editing, I noticed that the last two of the 10 are actually designer fragrances. So though this is a solid list, guess what? Open AI, you can keep your day job because I would have never made that mistake. Okay, back to the video. Definitely uh, something different for the designer world at the time, his very first fragrance. So he wanted to come, okay? Knocking down the door, stepping on next, and he did. It's a very polarizing fragrance. It's lover to hate it. I personally hate it. But there are so many people that love that fragrance. The thing about that fragrance, um, I'm not with no truffle, and that patchouli was so nauseating to me. Like it literally made me sick to my stomach. I sprayed it on at the mall numerous times. I have sprayed this in passing, just trying to. Let's see if we get it some different. No, it's always the same. I do not like that fragrance. And when I get home, I scrub the thing off. Like it lasts. It definitely gives some, some longevity and it should with that much patchouli. Um, but it is very, you know, it's different. It's got an opulent vibe for sure. Like I can see that smelling good on a man. Like something about certain fragrances or scents or notes that when it's heavy, I can see it on a man and I can probably appreciate it on a man, but I don't want it on myself. I don't want all that patchouli up under my nose. <laughs> so I can definitely see why this would make the list. Um, iconic for, for the brand, definitely. And probably I will say that for the designer world period, um, because it was really, yeah, it was really doing its thing. Definitely in when it was first released. Okay, number 10, you guys, I've been wanting to smell this, though I know I'm not going to like it. I know I'm not going to like it, but I ordered a sample and it didn't come on time. So I'm going to tell you what it is, but I have no idea what this smells like. And um, I would say that it's probably spot on for being on the list because Chanel lovers always bring this fragrance up. And this is Cormondel. The way Chanel does her patchouli, I do, oh, I do not like it. I mean, I do not like it. Um, and for that, I know it's a major player in this particular fragrance. So I'm still gonna sample it. I ordered a sample. It is not gonna get here to, I think, another two days, unfortunately. So I will check back in with you because let me tell you, if this smells good, I'm gonna wear it. But patchouli, we have a very complicated relationship and I hate most Chanel fragrances because they go hand with patchouli and I don't like how earthy and dirty their patchouli smells. However, this is less exclusive, so it may smell different. It may be a whole different vibe. So I'm very eager to see, but I'm telling you, the Chanel lovers, they ride for Cormondel and I'm not surprised they made the list. I'm glad I didn't see anything like Chanel number five or, you know, something iconic, but you, people wear that, but it's like, okay, for real, like, no. Okay, this list is solid. I'm impressed. And my job, I don't know. It may be in question. It may be in jeopardy. What y'all think? Have you had, you know, a chat GPT experience? Have you played around with it in the fragrance, um, you know, way? Because when you put those questions in there, you really will be impressed with some of the responses. Sometimes it's spot on and other times it's like, what? <laughs> but top 10 niche, I, I must say, 
I'm impressed, all right? So if you like this type of content, you want to see more fun videos like this, let me know in the comments and I will definitely consider doing more videos like this in the future. You guys, it has been real. I love you all. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and I will catch you guys on the next one.